Hi, I'm Gabby, and welcome to Gabbing with Gabby. In this series, we sit down with fellow wet on wet oil painters who brought their knowledge and talent to the world via the internet. It's a great chance for them to sort of put down their paintbrushes and just talk about themselves. It's also a great opportunity for all of us to get to know them a little bit better. Our guest today is Rob. Rob, would you please introduce yourself? Hi, uh, my name is Robert Olmeda, um, and I've been doing wet on wet painting for probably a year and seven months now um, total. So I'm, I'm still kind of a newbie to it, so to speak. <laughs> awesome. And where where are you located? What state do you live in? I live in Yakima, Washington. Um, it's basically like two and a half hours away drive wise from Seattle. Okay. Yeah. Is that on the other side of the mountains? It is. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, and are you originally from Washington? No, uh, originally I was born and raised in Texas, um, Corpus Christi, Texas. Lived there until my early 20s, then moved to Louisiana, a um, little bit away from New Orleans. Lived there for several years, and I've been here for the last um, 14 years. Okay. With my do, you, do you like it up there? I do. Yes, yeah. I really do. Yeah, I've heard the people in that area on the other side of the mountain tend to be really nice people. So, yeah, it's very nice people. Yeah, it's become my, it's become my home. It makes me happy because my son will grow up around like snow and winters because we don't have that in Texas. So, I grow up around all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's awesome. Um, so we'll talk about this. Um, what is your preferred medium to paint with? Um, oil paint. Um, that's really the only. I've, I've dabbled here and there with acrylic. But it's just it's just not meant for me. Um, I'm, I know I'm meant to do oil paints, so that so that's all I specifically ever do is oil paints. Okay. Um, and what do you prefer to paint? Um, I prefer any kind of ocean scene. Um, I always end up falling back into seascapes. Um, Kevin Hill. I just did a Kevin Hill tutorial where he had a big crashing wave where he took up like the whole 18 by 24 canvas, which was just absolutely beautiful. Um, and so I'm just into, I just love the beach scenes. I don't like the palm trees for whatever reason in the in like the in the beach scenes. I feel like it kind of to me takes away from everything else in the painting. So yeah. I, I leave those out and just leave everything else as far as the water and the sand and you know rocks on the beach and that kind of stuff. But yeah, those are my favorite ones to do by far. Okay. Um and so again, how long have you been painting? Year and seven months. It's around that time, but not not quite two years yet. And how did you get started? I got started because I just started watching um Bob Ross videos to be honest with you. And then I've always watched them since I was a kid, but I don't think I really sat down and really, really watched them because I've always just been a, a drawer. I know how to draw really well, like comic book kind of like drawings. Um, but I just told myself one day, like, hmm, I think I think maybe I can do that. Like, I think maybe I could take my, you know, my skill of drawing and transfer it into like a painting. I think I can do that. And sure enough, you know, slowly but surely I started getting the hang of it. Did you find though that drawing and painting are two very different things? Um, I find that they're similar. And especially now that I've been um, focusing my attention to doing like Kevin Hill's um, style, because Kevin Hill is really big on sketching. And sketching to me now, I find it's it's very important with oil painting because you, you tend to lose track of where you are on the canvas very easy. Because if you just go out there and say like, oh, well, this mountain looks like it's, you know, top third of the way up and you don't gauge the distance right, then you can lose you know, everything underneath that because you don't have enough room for like your land or your, so I feel like sketching really does help. And so there's a lot of drawing involved in a sort in a lot of ways with painting, so. Um, when you first started painting, what was easy for you? Um, <laughs> nothing was easy about it when I started painting. And I'm sure every painter would say that. I I look back at it now and I think like I laugh at myself because I literally dipped the two inch brush like halfway down into the liquid white and put it up there not realizing like it took like 0.1% of what I put up, you know, I didn't realize how thin of a coat it is. So everything about it was just a complete nightmare when I first started. And if you saw my first picture, it was just an absolute just mess. But so I, I have to be honest with you, because I'm sure every painter will say that it's, I think it's kind of, you know, not true to say like, yeah, this was easy or this came really, because <laughs> not none of it to me was easy when I first started. Anything that was particularly difficult? Yeah, um, the mountains. Um, it took me, I just recently barely started getting lots of people telling me that my mountains are really outstanding. I rarely ever do them though, because like I said, I always get drawn back into doing oceans and water, but um, it took me about a year and a half before I got the hang of the right coat, you know, coating to put on there as far as like the, for the base, not to put too much when you're creating your mountain and to scrape it off. And and then the highlights, of course, everybody struggles with just the breaking and the, the paint breaking. 
for the highlights. It's just it's one of those things that takes takes a lot of practice and a lot of like feel. So I would say that more than anything was the hardest thing. Like I told somebody else, it's like no pressure, no pressure. It's so much pressure. <laughs> they say that you don't realize like um, they say no pressure, but it's even less than that. If that makes sense, I mean it literally is like the blade is floating. Um, you really can't put. I mean you got to hold your blade with just like your two. I hold it with my thumb and my this finger right here. Like I don't even use a third finger because. It just you tend to just mash it in there the more fingers you got involved in the <laughs> in holding so. yeah definitely um is there anything that you're still working on learning um yeah i'm i would say if there's one thing i'm really um, working on learning it's the grass like the just the land aspect when it comes to paintings but again i'll go back to that's why i feel like kevin hill's style is meant for me because i've never been good with like the tappy grass with like the bob ross you know how he taps the two inch brush to get those highlights of the of the grass. You gotta thin the paint like a certain consistency. Um, but with Kevin Hill, Kevin Hill, I feel like makes his land more realistic looking because it's he uses just so many mid-tones in his paint. And so, and of course, if you, like we drive by um, a lot of the hills over here and it's like light brown and dark brown and light green. And that's really how nature is. It's not like just a straight green, you know, or a straight brown. And so I feel like that has helped me a lot of the way in a lot of ways get over that because I do struggle with that tappy grass, but I feel like doing it in his style, I can kind of get over that. Awesome. Um, how long do you think it took before you felt semi comfortable with painting with oil? Just the last couple months. Um, and again, it was only because um, I started doing um, Kevin style. Um, I felt like I only got so far with the Bob Ross style. Um, and a lot plays into that. Um, I, I never had one-on-one -on -one training or teaching by a professional. I've, you know, like Faye Fletcher and Nick Hankins, I've never gone to Florida and had the week seminars or anything like that, like most people have the chance to do. So everything just had to have been like self-taught. Um, and so I feel like you can only get to a certain point with a certain type of painting. But I feel like with Kevin's, um, it just makes sense to me. It made sense to me right away. Like just the way his color mixtures were and the way he used the brushes, even the brushes I feel like I'm comfortable with. and. So I would just say just only the last two months have I felt like I've reached, you know, a level that I wasn't reaching in the year and a half before that with the Bob Ross technique. And how many pieces do you think you've painted since you started? I, I don't get to I, I don't get to paint as much as I want. Um, it is a family. I'm sure everybody can understand that. It's hard to balance art time and family time and doing errands and housework and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So um, I would say I've maybe painted more than 100 paintings in the year and seven months. And, and again, because I've gone through stretches where it's like I only paint once every two weeks or once every three weeks or sometimes once a month because things just happen, you know, and you just don't have the time to sit there and do a painting for like three hours, you know, sometimes. So do you have a designated spot that you paint or do you have to kind of set up and then tear down every time you paint? No, I, um, my fiance was really awesome enough to set me up uh, my own painting room and we have a spare back room next to our workout room. So it's just dedicated to painting and I got my Bob Ross easel back there with all my paint stuff. And so I have my own little painting area, which is nice is I don't have to just constantly set up like a table easel or, you know, like most people have to do who don't have their own space. So I have my own space where I can just go back there and be by myself and, you know, just paint. That helps actually with time constraint because, it, you know, imagine if you had to set up and tear down every single time too. Oh yeah. And then, um, Peter, as you know, cause you've been doing it for a while now, it's just like, um, a lot of times you get it, you get inside your head a lot of times, especially when you're tired, because painting can be weary on you. Um, especially when you've been doing a painting for two hours, your body just tends to get tired. And then when you start to do that, then that's when your painting suffers because you you just tend to like start rushing yourself without realizing it because you just want to get it done. And because also, you know, like deep down, like, oh my gosh, I still got to clean my palette and I still got to clean these brushes. And of course, there's like all these brushes scattered everywhere with paint all over them. And it's not an easy process. It's not like a five, it's not even like a five minute process to clean everything and put it away. So sometimes you can kind of psych yourself out too like by doing that yeah definitely um let's see do you have other hobbies outside of painting yes um I was big into fishing um I love to fish camping especially with my family just being outdoors um other than that those are my two like favorite and then painting of course now so those are my two favorite hobbies I used to draw but my son is kind of taking over that for me my son maybe got that for me because he's a good drawer also himself and he's 13 now but those are really like my main hobbies, I would say. And then just spending time with my family more than anything is my always going to be my top hobby. So, yeah. And how old are your kids? 
I have two. Um, one's 23 and one's 13. So there's a 10 year. <laughs> ten year uh, two. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're you're closer to the home stretch at this point, though. So yeah. that's, I mean, not that we ever don't have our kids, but it's right. tough when they're really little. Right. Um. Let's see. Do you sell any of your work? Yes, I have an Etsy shop that has been up for maybe two months now. I'm just started on that. Um, I never thought I would be selling because, of course, when I first started, they weren't, I didn't ever thought they were quality enough to like, you know, to sell. But now that I've been getting comment compliments from people on the forums to tell me like, wow, this painting looks like a photograph or this one. Wow, I would pay like $300 for that one. You know, it, of course, it got me thinking like, hmm, maybe I should start selling. Maybe I am reaching that point where I can start selling my, but selling is hard. It's not one of those things where they just fly off the shelves like right away. It's just, you know, and you have to paint more because I only have like, I think maybe eight paintings posted on Etsy, but of course you got to have a wide selection so people can really have a lot of variety to look at, you know. So that's the issue I'm having right now is I need to paint more. I do realize I have to paint more if I want to do more as far as like sales, but it's not my top priority because I do have a job and, but it would be nice for me to be able to have that as far as confidence wise to be able to say like, wow, I sold a $300 painting. I never thought I would do that, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And it's, have you ever done any art shows or anything like that? No, I've been looking into that. There's, there's several art galleries um, here in my city that I've been in contact with. I've, um, they're booked as far as for like this year, but the beginning of next year is when they start having openings where I can start showcasing some of my paintings. And they have a cool thing where one place down here in downtown that you can post your painting and like, um, it's like a shop, but like, it's just a big like windows that everybody passes by. So you can have your painting portrayed there, like, or shown in these big windows, but they only select a few people. So I'm hoping to be one of those next year. Yeah, definitely. And you should look into doing like just local art shows, you know, like one day art show things too, because um, I do a lot of that stuff and I sell a ton of paintings. Right. So yeah. But again, it's a matter of having time to do that. Right, right, right. So let's see. I think as artists, we're all required to have somebody who inspires us besides Kevin Hill, <laughs> who inspires you. And, and you're talking artist wise. Yeah. Artist wise. Okay. Can I name several people? It's hard to really. As many as you can even say Kevin if you want. Go for it. <laughs> Kevin Hill, um, Nick Hankins, Faye Fletcher, um, Josh Kirkham, Dean Mowbray, you, because I've been watching you lately too. That's what caught my attention because I've been seeing your paintings and how you're just involved with doing a lot of interviews with the, a lot of people and stuff like that. Um, Leslie Stover. Um, Tanya Purdy. I mean, I did just go on and on. There's like a whole bunch of people that have influenced me in a good way. Um, Kane Mansfield. I mean, there's just so many people. I know I'm leaving people out, but those are people that have just been there with me since like the start when I first started painting and helping me with tips and that kind of stuff. And Faye was actually the first one who got me um, into like taking my art to like, you know, a good level. And she, I was with her online courses kind of thing. So. Um, do you have any traditional artists that you like? Um, as far as like old school artists? Yeah. Um, Van Gogh always kind of interested me because you always hear that he was probably one of the greatest artists of all time. So I find myself always looking at just his art. I was doing that just the other night, just looking at his drawing, you know, art um, paintings that he did that are on display and people come from all around the world just to see his art. And so he always fascinated me because people always say that his technique that he uses like will never be replicated is what a lot of people tend to say because I always think like, you know, what a gift that is to just be known as somebody who's probably the greatest artist of all time. Awesome. Um, let's see. Do you have a favorite paintbrush? Right now it would be the, f mm, I have two, um, the liner brush, uh, but only Kevin Hills. <laughs> I, I've used Bob Ross's line brush. But I've had those plenty of times, but Kevin Hills has an extra long um, bristles on it they make the paint flow off of it really, really great for branches and stuff like that. And then the filbert brush are probably my two. The filbert brush, you can do a lot with the filbert brush. So those are my two. Filbert. They're great. Um, let's see, what is your favorite brand of oil paint? Um, probably Gamblin um, and Windsor and Newton. Those are my two. Um, I've gotten Bob Ross paints because um, a lot of times, well, when I was using this technique, uh, Midnight Black, there's certain colors that they don't sell in Michaels and Hobby Lobby, the stores that are here. For eyelids, so a lot of times I would have to order those online, but they would be very oily um, to where I would have to set them on cardboard for at least like 30 minutes just to get the excess oil off. So that's why I wasn't, I wasn't really too fond of that brand. 
So I really stopped buying it. But Gamblin probably is my favorite out of any of them. Do you like the 1980 or the professional line? The 1980. Um, yeah, that's my favorite because it, it's just so the texture just suits me. I, don't, I never have to worry about it being too oily or anything like that. And the color to me is just like really, really great once it gets up on the canvas. Yeah. And and affordable too. I know some of the professional line of the gambling stuff because I have I have both and um, it's a lot more expensive and I don't know that it's a whole lot better quality. Right. So at least that's the way I see it. But. Yeah, I think I have to agree with you on that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Why did you decide to start videoing your work? As far as this interview, <laughs> or just like just just why why did you start a YouTube channel to begin with? I started a YouTube channel because I want to make myself known. Um, I feel like I'm reaching a point where I can take my my art to uh, to the next level. Um, I've only been doing this past the surface. I feel like, um, but I feel like I'm almost there. Um, I feel like I'm almost going to get to that point where just where it all makes sense. Some of it makes sense, but some of it doesn't. I'm at that point right now. So I created the YouTube um, channel so people can, you know, find out more about me, see my art, you know, and just see what kind of artist I am and just make my myself known. It's the best way to make yourself known is to get out there because nobody's going to find out who you are if you're just painting in your painting room and then just don't, <laughs> you know, really tell anybody about it or, you know. Absolutely. Um, what do you think your future in art looks like? my goal and it may be a lofty goal or <laughs> or but i i just want to reach great heights because um i always tend to look like i go to kevin hill's um website that he created his own website and then um i see like that he sells his paintings for no less than a thousand dollars every single one of his paintings none of them sell for under a thousand bucks so i always tell myself like can you imagine what it would be like just to be like that great to where you're selling your paintings for that much you know and you know, what it must do for you confidence wise to be known as just, you know, one of the world's greatest painters. Because a lot of people have a lot of respect for him as far as like a painter, you know, so I was just, it's just that that really gets to me. Um, let's see, what do you have, what advice do you have for people who are just getting started? That you're gonna, because I went through this, I, I would say I almost got to a point three separate times where I almost quit painting altogether. Where I just felt like I'm not, I'm not where I should be. This painting is awful. Um, nothing looks right on it. <laughs> I'm sure, and I'm sure you've been there because we've all been there. Where you just step back and you're just like, you want to throw your paintbrush at the canvas, like, like what am I even doing? And so it's just like, basically say, just push through that. Don't just realize that the mistakes that you feel like you're making or that you are making are going to lead to you learning from them. Because when you're making those mistakes at that very time, you tend to think like that's what it's going to be the rest of the way. And that's not the case. Um, you're not going to be a great painter overnight. You're not going to be a great painter probably even in several years. It's going to take some practice and and time, and just don't lose confidence and just don't give up. Like it's the best advice I could give because I almost did it three separate times where I just I even told like my family, like, I'm just I'm not getting it. Like maybe it's not meant for me. And you got to push through that because painting will test your it'll test your your mentality whether or not you're good enough, and it'll make you have a lot of self doubt. For sure, absolutely. Um, what do you wish you had known when you first started? Um, I wish I I wish I had known the techniques that I know now when I first started back then. Of course, <clears throat> that pertains to life too. You wish you, you know, you always say as an adult too, like I wish I would have known then what I knew now, and then I would have done a lot of the stupid things that I did in the past. But it's the same thing with painting. Of course, you wish like, well, had I known that it takes a very thin tone of liquid white and not the whole container, then that would have been nicer. You know, had I known that it's no pressure and not pushing the blade all the way down on the canvas, you know, when making highlights. So of course you wish, I wish that I would have known all those things when I first started, because then I could have just started at a really great starting point instead of just starting from like ground zero, so. Definitely. Um, do you have a favorite piece that you've painted? Yes, um, probably my crashing wave one that I just did um, several weeks ago from a Kevin Hill tutorial. That was probably my, it's probably the one that I've gotten, I've ever gotten the most comments and likes rooms. Uh, I'm on the forum for the Bob Ross for Beginners, mm -hmm. where a lot of my art friends on there. And that's the, the, the painting that I got the most like attention for or praise for from a lot of people that were really happy with that painting, the way it came out. And so that's the one that I'm very proud of the most because it just, that one just clicked to me. It all made sense watching his tutorial, everything that he did, I, I felt like I was doing, you know, technique wise the same way. And it just came out really, really great. Awesome. 
Um, what does painting mean to you? It means a lot to me. Um, it brings me joy when I do it. It's like my it's like my safe little haven. I mean, I feel at peace when I do it, which I think is very important. You don't want to go into painting painting when you're frustrated or having a bad day because I feel like your mentality and how you're feeling translates to how you're going to paint something. I really do because I've gone into painting something when I'm half into it where I'm kind of debating like, should I paint? I don't really feel like it. Well, let me just go in there and do it. And then it turns out like not very great because you didn't have the right mentality going into it. I feel like painting takes a lot of like saying, all right, let's do this. You know, I'm going to, this is going to be a good painting, you know, having that positive attitude. So I feel like it, it's making me a better person, if that makes sense, because it, it's, it's made me have a lot more confidence, especially the better you get with at it. Yeah, definitely. Okay, on to our bonus questions. If you could travel anywhere in the world to see art that was done by somebody else, where would it be and why? Um, well, I don't know where it's located, but I would like to go see um, Michelangelo, you know, the paintings that he had on the, up on the ceiling and that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know exactly where that's located, but I've always heard that's one of the most beautiful things to see, like when you're standing underneath it and looking up at it. Um, that's one of those things like you're just in amazement at how somebody could create something like that on such a large scale. So that would be the one place that I would want to go to to see something. Well, uh, let me tell, let me tell you where that is because I've seen it. Okay. Um, it's in the Sistine Chapel in um, in Rome in the Vatican in Vatican City. Okay. The Sistine Chapel, and it is. Um, I've seen a lot of art because I've traveled in a lot of places and the Sistine Chapel is probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So sometime go to Rome. Yes. <laughs> it's worth it, every minute of it. Um, have you ever made anybody sit down and paint with you? No, um, I never have, um, only because I feel like if you if you want to paint, then you would choose to, you know, I don't want to feel like I ever have to force somebody to to paint. Um, does either want to paint or you don't. Um, and of course, it's always just me, my fiance and my son here. My son's not a painter. He's he's more of a sports boy. He loves to play sports. And I mean, painting's not in his <laughs> in his DNA right now. He, he more loves to draw more than anything. And my fiance, she likes to see my art. But I don't think she really wants to paint. Um, and that's okay, because it's not for it's not for everybody. So but if anybody wanted to learn or, you know, offer to want to learn from me, then I'd be more than happy to to show them what I've learned so far. Because I wish I would have had that when I was first starting. I wish I would have had somebody who was at the point that I am right now, who could have showed me the things that I know right when I first started, you know, kind of thing. Because I would be further along than I am right now had I not started from like ground zero from nothing. Absolutely. Um, my last bonus question that I have for you is if you could ask one other artist one question, who would it be and what would the question be? Hmm, that's a good one. So, <laughs> so as you know, you probably guessed, as I mentioned his name like 20 times now throughout this interview, Kevin Hill, um, I would probably ask him, um, how long did it take you before you felt like you knew that you were gonna possibly be a great artist? Like, at what point did you know, like, I feel like I can really do this and make a name for myself? Because I would really like to know the answer to that because I feel like every artist at some point reaches that level where it's a certain painting or a certain month where they just feel like, I got this. Like, I, I, it just all totally makes sense to me now. I'm only going to go forward from here, not backwards. Like, I, I get it all now kind of thing. So I would really like to know the answer to that question if I had a chance to ask him. Awesome. That's a great question. Um, let's kind of finish this up. Do you have any final thoughts before we sort of leave this? Other than I appreciate the chance to talk to you it's been it's been great um i'm jealous that you've seen that painting <laughs> in rome so hoping to get pictures from you on that at least and then um just um like i said just stick with painting just try and paint as much as you can is my biggest thing um if you have an opportunity to paint if you have downtime then take advantage of it and paint there's a lot of moments where i regret um where i was just here at the house with like by myself with no family and, and didn't paint, you know, just it's just it's just valuable time that you, you could use to practice and to learn your craft. And so if that's the biggest advice that I could give somebody, it's um, use your time wisely, but also use it to advance your painting career if that's what you're trying to do to try and get better. Because the only way you can get better is by painting and don't lose confidence in yourself. That's that's the biggest advice that I can give because it will challenge you big time and it'll make you want to quit. But just don't do that. Absolutely. 
Um, if people were looking for you online, where would they find you? My Etsy shop, um, my profile name on Etsy is Rob Olmeda 80. And of course, my last name is O-L-M-E-D-A. It's it's very hard to pronounce. <laughs> so I was, that's why I always spell it out. And on YouTube, you can simply just type up Robert Olmeda and then you can find my YouTube channel. Um, I just barely up and started my YouTube channel. Um, I have, I believe the last time I checked, I only had 19 followers. Again, I'm, I'm just up and coming. I'm not a, I'm not a YouTube star by any means. So, <laughs> so those are the ways people can find me. And of course on Facebook, you can just search me up by typing my name and I'm on the Bob Ross for beginners, um, oil painting forum with all of you wonderful people. And, um, so that those are the best ways to find me. Awesome. Well, thank you, Rob, so much for being um, here and doing an interview with me. I love hearing people, you know, who are in different stages. And um, so it's been really great to chat with you. So yes. Thank you so much. Yes, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yes, you're welcome. Um, and I guess, do you have any other questions or comments before we go? No, other than just, um, I enjoyed this very much. It was very awesome to have an interview with you. So I'm just thankful for the chance to have this opportunity. So thank you a lot. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Okay, guys, I think that's it for our show today. If you guys have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section of the video. We'll do our best to address them. I'm Gabby. This is Rob. Go to his page. He needs more than 19 followers, so get on that. Um, and let's encourage him to build up that YouTube channel. And until next time, guys, I really, really do hope that you fall in love with oil painting just as much as we have. Bye now. Bye.